Hi, I'm Phyllis Lang and welcome to Nightwear. This video demonstrates the interoperation feature in Deep Sky Planner 4 with the Planetarium program Redshift 7. Everything that you see on this demonstration also applies to Redshift 6. For this demonstration, we're using Redshift 7 Premium from Maris Technologies and we're running the demonstration on Windows Vista Home Premium. To get started, we need to tell Deep Sky Planner which star charting program to talk to. To do so, we need to choose Star Chart Programs and select Redshift 7. For the first example, we'll create a planetary ephemeris and we'll have Redshift 7 center its display on the planet Uranus. Deep Sky Planner is configured for my local location, date and time, and the same setup is currently configured for Redshift 7. The geographic location, date and time must match between the two programs for this function to work correctly. In order to have Redshift 7 center its display on the planet Uranus, we click on the ephemeris item and simply choose Show Chart. This will command Redshift to pan its display to the planet Uranus. And there it has centered the planet Uranus in its display. Next, let's try something in the Deep Sky catalogs. We'll open a Deep Sky search document and we'll search for the Caldwell catalog. I'll stretch the window a bit so we can see more of the data. Let's try the Bowtie Nebula, beautiful planetary in the constellation Cepheus. Right click on this particular Deep Sky report entry and click Show Chart to command Redshift to move its display and center it on called Well 2, the Bowtie Nebula. And here it has centered its display on the Bowtie Nebula, which is also known as NGC 40. This particular nebula is known to Redshift 7 by several names, and we can see that Caldwell 2 is one of them. Finally, we'll search for an object that's difficult to see and moves rather quickly so that it's also difficult to find, perhaps something like an asteroid. To do that, I'll open a Minor Planet search document and I'll search for objects according to my current date and time and visible now. I'll stretch the view so that we can see more of the data and I'll select the asteroid Juno. Again, right click on an object in the report and click Show Chart to command Redshift to move its display so that it is centered on the minor planet Juno. And there it has centered its display on the minor planet Juno. And there it is. That's all for this video. If you use Redshift 7 Premium or Redshift 6 Premium, I hope you found this demo useful and that it helps you to get more from Deep Sky Planner 4. Thanks for watching.